Next video, YouTubers who accidentally found terrifying things. Connor Kelly and his family were exploring the McCoy Mine in Nevada. An abandoned mine shaft in the desert, with a portion of the entrance still accessible, the group begins to travel through the depths of the mine and begin their exploration. The cavern was very large, with a few artifacts still present from when it was functional years ago. Bro, did that just say they don't talk because they fear that that will bring down loose rock? Then why the f*** are you wandering in a cave if you think talking is gonna make this sh collapse? A few artifacts still present from when it was functional years ago. The group stays quiet, as they don't want to risk the sound dislodging any rocks from the ceiling. However, it's not long before they approach something that demands discussion. Reflection? They're trying to... Just a fucking mountain lion kills both of them. Oh. Oh, Jesus, what the fuck? Watch your mouth, you motherfucker. Don't you say the word fuck. You're like fucking six years old. Shut the fuck up. The group finds a large pile of children-sized shoes and bones. Okay. Yo, I thought it was just gonna be shoes and bones. The group suddenly gets justifiably cautious and stands back as they're unsure what to do from here. One member of the group uh, even- I'ma get the fuck out of the cave. You see a bunch of children's shoes and bones? Even if they're other animals' bones, I'm out. And pulls a gun, fearing for nearby predators deeper in the cave, or quite possibly, even another human. After a brief discussion and inspecting the pile of shoes a little closer, the group advances a little bit further, where a dead end is found and the floor is scattered with more bones. Ah, uh, but that's not human bones. That's like some other animal. Dude, them being in here is what's so sketchy is because that means like a fucking big ass animal lives in this. Further investigation from viewers of the video mentioned that the bones don't appear to be human. It's more likely that these bones were a result of animal carcasses from predators such as mountain lions who might have feasted on their food within the cave. The children's shoes, however, are a completely different story. There is no definite explanation for this, and I- uh, Yo, I'm yoink at a pair of those sneaks right there. Those ones look fucking high quality. I feel like I'd re I could resell those on StockX for like fucking 120. There is no definite explanation for this, and I don't think there ever will be. However, the leading theory is that these were trophies collected from a serial killer. How is that a th how is that a theory? You just see you just see shoes in a, an abandoned cave. Well, the realistic theory here is that um it's a serial killer's trophies. What? That's like the you have there's no there's nothing leaning towards that. It's a bunch of shoes in an abandoned mine shaft. Half of those shoes look old as fuck. And there's animal bones everywhere. I, I, what the fuck? Wh how, why would a serial killer put them there? Collecting items from victims isn't unheard of. With a very famous legend in Michigan claiming that a mysterious tree dangling children's shoes was also decorated by a serial killer. If you look at the shoes, they all- Yo, you know the one surefire way to know that you're in, like, an area where you gotta watch out when motherfuckers be throwing shoes over the wires? God damn, you know what I'm talking about? When you're, when you're fucking just walking and there's like a pair of shoes that are just hanging. Why do people do that? Oh, it celebrates milestones? What the fuck? Dude, I thought people just threw shoes over power lines to just do it. Like, you don't want your shoes anymore, so you just throw them over a fucking power line. I'm always skeezed out when I see that shit. Because they want the London Bridge to fall down? What? Also appeared to be tethered differently. It's respect for dead people? Really? Why the fuck does it say a celebration then? Hold up. Crews can, uh, it not only can it mark violence, but, or, or not violence, um, uh, milestones, but then this is another article that says, crews use shoes to mark their block. The shoes memor memorialize, I can't read, victims of gun violence. Kids being silly toss the shoes on the power line when a victim loses a bet, when the perpetrators are taunting their victims. Okay, so then I am right to say I'm sketched out by that because that's where people are claiming, what, blocks or territory? I was told it was for haunted houses. What the fuck? What the hell is that logic? People throw shoes over power lines for 
for haunted houses. Some shoes look so worn like they've been there. That's really sad if it's the people's shoes that died though. There for decades, while others only a few years old. These shoes weren't dumped here all at once. It's a collection that had been built for some time. A YouTuber by the name Dateline420 was hiking- Oh, he's in actually doing like deep dives of random YouTubers, bro. I thought he was gonna go into like the Logan Paul shit. The woods in the border of a park in Suffolk County, New York. Here he stumbled across what he believed to be the end of somebody's property, as there was a shed and a fire pit, as well as the sound of cars in the distance. Directly outside, where the property line meets the woods, were trees decorated with something harrowing. Anyway, I'll cut right to the chase because I might die. Look what these fucking are. Missing person photos. Not one. Missing not since 2006. Oh my god, look how many are stapled on the trees. I would be so scared. Not one, not two, but dozens of posters detailing missing people. And they're different people. Oh my god. They're pinned on almost every tree in the surrounding area. One might wonder if maybe this was a setup for a video, however making this all more disturbing. These have been confirmed to be real missing people. Taking a closer look, these are missing person cases from all across the United States and throughout different years, mostly between 2009 and 2013. They also look very old and weathered, as if they've been hung up for quite some time. So these, you could tell, these aren't new. Like, not just that this is 2012, Noblesville, Indiana, right? Look at the fucking tape. Look at the water damage. These shits have been hanging up for a, a while. And why would you put missing person photos in the middle of the woods? Whether this be a serial killer's documentation of his murders or Bro, some- he keeps reaching though, okay? This one's maybe a, a an easier reach than saying shoes in a fucking abandoned cave are of a serial killer. But this guy just keeps saying- uh, maybe it's a serial killer's, uh, maybe it's a serial killer's mark of his territory. Uh, maybe the serial, maybe the serial killer really wants to fucking show off, uh, the people that he killed. Uh, maybe the serial killer has something, the serial killer has nothing to fucking do with this. It's still disturbing either way. The man then investigated the surrounding area and finds a few more unsettling things. The most odd being what appears to be a cage built with binded tree branches in a filled-in hole sitting at the center. The man eventually hears voices and runs away. Oh my god. He reported the findings to the police, and after a quick investigation, the house adjacent to the campsite claimed that they pinned the photos that they were preparing for an upcoming Halloween party. However, if that's the case- Cap! Cap! Upcoming Halloween party, that tape looks fucking 30 years old. Why do the posters look so old? And why was this the only thing set up at least a month before Halloween. It's like With middle of fucking July. Oh, we're just getting ready for Halloween. Many people asking, and Dateline420 very curious, he revisited the site on Halloween to only find multiple new no trespassing signs and no indicator for any party or event. YouTuber Sam and Colby often make videos- Oh, they're actually doing a real YouTuber this time. Fucking hell. I thought it was just gonna be a bunch of random accounts that do like mini vlogs. Featuring themselves and a group of friends as they visit haunted locations. I say this with no disrespect, as I think it makes for a more interesting story. However, their content is very suited to the seemingly staged side of YouTube horror. I agree. I made a video trashing um one of like the Brent Rivera haunted house videos. And a lot of the comments were like, well, Sam and Colby's are amazing. And they're better right they're better but sam and colby is still staged like a lot of it i know they do like real ghost hunting but like if you watch a sam and colby video like most of it most of it is not real ghosts like you could say most of it is an overreaction they're kind of panning into it seems like every abandoned place they go to has some paranormal occurrence and it's hard to imagine that at least some of these aren't staged Again, I want to reiterate. You know, like, they sometimes they would go and, the, and then nothing would happen, right? Like, why does that never happen? Like, them just having a full-on video where, like, there's just fucking nothing. They're very entertaining, and they deserve the success for the production they put in. However, one night, they witnessed one of the most terrifying horrors they have on this channel, and they didn't even realize it. In a video titled Exploring Abandoned Insane Asylum, Girl Screams, 
Sam and Colby, as well as fellow YouTubers the Ireland Boys, visited an abandoned asylum hidden in a nearby forest. Typical to the format they have on many videos, they explore the abandoned building and swear someone was there with them. Yeah, but that building is scary as fuck. Okay, like, yo, I, ugh, I'm not, I'm not saying I don't, I doubt ghosts exist, but I would be much less convinced of ghosts existing than they are. But in this area, I'd be skeezed out. Right? This is just creepy. I don't know if I would think that there's a ghost, but it would still sketch me out. I think there's something downstairs. Whatever thing that you heard earlier, I think that's basically all there is there. Would no you stay ghost. there overnight for a million dollars? Uh, yeah. I'd stay overnight in almost any area for a million dollars. Dude, I would sleep down there for like 10 grand. Not alone. Alone, 100. 10, if you pay me 10 and you paid like a friend of mine 10, I'd sleep down there. It's just a bunch of rooms. Well, then let's go over here and figure out what's downstairs before it comes up and finds us. Okay. They act nervous and walk around cautiously. However, as they're exploring more, they hear police sirens coming from the distance. Thinking that they might be coming for them, as visiting this place is technically trespassing, the group flees the building and stakes out in the nearby woods. There are people right in front of us that are not Colby, and they are looking right past us. It's only here that a series of odd occurrences commence that even the YouTubers aren't quite sure what to make of. They notice a few random people entering the building they just left, and a helicopter with active searchlights flying Holy over. fuck! Yo, I'd be faulting out of that woods. I'd say there's a fucking serial killer in that goddamn fucking abandoned house. I'm getting the fuck out of there. They got a goddamn helicopter with searchlights? Rack ass shit. Get out of there. Why are they filming? They're standing right in front of us. They're looking over us right now. They could probably hear you in the fucking woods with your goddamn camera. Head. They run through the woods, trying to make their escape, when they suddenly hear a blood-curdling scream. Whoa. Guys, what the f You hear that? <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm not saving them. I'm not, I'm not saving them. I'm out of that bitch, bro. I'm out of that bitch. Especially if I heard like a gunshot, I'm gone. I'm fucking gone. I hear, ah, and then like a bang, I'm dead. Uh-uh. No. Get out of here. Go. Guys, f run. See, but like that makes it seem, nah, like that, like his reaction just makes it seem so fucking whack. Get out of here, guys. Run. I'm cutting the cameras. I'm cutting the cameras. I'm I'm dropping that bitch. And I'm saying, get me the fuck out of here. I'm dropping that kid-friendly fucking facade. Right? Okay, yeah, I'll keep the cameras run. I'm dropping that kid-friendly facade. I'm saying a curse word every other fucking every other fucking word. We gotta get the fuck out of here. We're gonna die. The woman continues to scream, and eventually the crew flees the woods to conclude their latest episode of exploring creepy abandoned buildings. After this night and the upload of the video, viewers would begin to get curious and investigate what might have happened that night. And a few weeks later, they would find out that yes, it was true. This was most definitely not a planned bit by Sam and Colby. If you take a look at this map, the YouTube group was in this forest in early September of 2017. It was right here on September 13th that the body of Lauren Wallen, a pregnant mother, was found dead in a shallow grave. She had been missing for nine days. Although never confirmed, one can easily imagine where these screams came from on that tragic night in this forest. Oh, what the fuck? Maybe they should have came. Maybe they should have went back. Oh my god, I would feel I would feel like I was I I could have saved them. Nah, yo, I thought it was gonna be some bullshit where he was like, oh, maybe it was staged. Yo, that woman actually died. Guys, what the? F you hear that? Oh, uh, dude, I'm quitting YouTube if that happens. Oh yeah, I would too. Dude, if I was if I was searching abandoned houses and somebody died like a fucking hundred yards away from me, I'd be done, dude. I'd be like, I'm not fucking looking at this shit anymore. And she was pregnant too. Oh. Adventures with Purpose is a YouTube channel that focuses on recovering artifacts from lakes and ponds. These are normally related to true crime cases, whether it be a car from a criminal or an article of clothing from missing people. The goal of the channel is to basically help out investigations as well as aiding the environment. That's why, on May 26th of 2020, the group planned to participate in a mass environmental cleanup. 
In a survey of a lake in Portland, Oregon, they found evidence. Oh, they're gonna find a dead body, bro. Oh my God, they're gonna find a fucking dead body in a fucking duffel bag. Evidence of multiple vehicles that have sunk to the bottom of the lake. On a day where the tide was low, the group built a map pinning general Yo, location. What would you do? Not even okay. Not even in the scuba diving shit. If you're walking with your friends in the woods and you see a dead fucking body. I mean, like, that's what Logan Paul ran into, but, I mean, he had, like, a fucking weird-ass reaction to it. I would call 911, but I would also be, like, poke it. Somebody said poke it. I'm, I'm, I, would, I would be calling the cops as I was running, and then I don't know what the fuck I would do. Oh, my God. I would want to know so bad, though, like, what the fuck happened. And plan to dedicate the day to retrieving them and cleaning out the waters. They get in their wetsuits and begin navigating the lake diving down and pinpointing each car detailed in their debriefing. They quickly find the first car and begin preparing for extraction. After attaching the car to a trailer on the land and positioning it to be pulled up a ramp, Adventures with Purpose went live to document a sweet moment in humanity. Oh god, should I scan this? I should probably fucking scan this, dude. Uh, we are finally back in the water. Yes, we are. Uh, before that, like, we can like elbow bump yeah, because bump. anyway, we have a car that's coming out right now. We this car today. We're gonna do this whole thing live. Like we blurred though. We spent last uh, what four or five hours. Oh, yeah. Four or five hours. Already getting this thing out because it was ten thirty. Ten thirty this morning. It was eighty feet deep, and so we're now at the very end of this, and we've never oh done. Oh my god! I'm waiting to see his mood change. Actual live, Here showing somebody bring it to, for us to bring out of the, out of the uh, river. Many individuals were volunteering their time to clean the water, and just as the first car began to emerge from the lake, a chilling discovery would be found. There it is. A decomposed body and bones were sitting in the front seat. After the police were called, investigation found that this body belonged to Timothy Robinson, a man who went missing on November 27th of 2008, 12 years before this discovery was made. Wow, and they never found him? The family was notified and were relieved to finally have some closure after so many years. Exploring with Josh, a YouTuber who explores a variety of places, once found his crew in him. Do you think he purposefully drove in there or it just happened that he did? Video for the three. This cave in Washington County is named the Ape Cave and stretches almost 2.5 miles long. Although deep, the cave is rather open with plenty of room for exploring and walking around. There's little risk of getting stuck and it's typically welcoming to amateur spelunkers. Josh and his friends found this encouraging, however, weren't afraid of taking a little risk to reach less explored sectors of the cave. I finally seen some sort of writing, but I can't really make out what it says. But I think we're going to be kneeling down now. I think we're going to have to kneel down. Oh no, they're going to have to crouch. No. You ever see the videos where cavers are fucking pancaked into the fucking wall? And they're like, when I breathe in, I can't move. That's scary. When they're going... <gasps> and like they're fucking trying to trying to just fucking be able to breathe they can't even get out of the cave majority of the 12 minute vlog just features the crew having fun they begin to walk down a corridor that continuously gets smaller and smaller before each are on their stomachs inching through the narrow tunnel they found themselves in they continue to question if they should continue wondering if there's any more to explore as the tunnel gets rather tight I don't even know if this leads out anywhere I think it's just the end we can be crawling all day let's find out they even reach a point where I'd they- I'd be so worried in this moment. Number one, okay, yeah, that- I might stop here. Would you guys keep crawling? God, they'd be able to turn around, but that- that's like claustrophobia, dude. That's fucking tight. I'd be worried I'd see an animal. They were about to turn back. However, Josh luckily noticed oh, no. that the tunnel opened up. The crew squeezed through and successfully reached the end of the cave. What they didn't know- was that somebody was waiting for them at the end. Stop! Oh my god, somebody alive? Okay. Um, got it. Can I head back now? This girl doesn't have a flashlight. Okay, I'm gonna have to take out my phone, actually. English? 
don't know speaking English. No English. Who the fuck is that? Who the fuck is that? What? What? They found a random kid in the middle of a cave? What the fuck? Bro, that's a skinwalker. That's a skinwalker. That thing's about to go. No. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, uh. Oh my god, she doesn't speak English. Um. How the uh, fuck did she get into this cave? Huh? Come with <laughs> us? Hey, Josh. Do you see those, uh, the couple that was back there? Come on, come with us. Can you tell them their daughter's up here and she's scared? They, 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 they don't speak. She yeah, doesn't she speak English. English. They don't speak English. It's okay. It's all right. Oh, Google Translate! Oh my god, they have no service because they're in the cave. Fuck! I'd be like, I'd just start saying random words in different languages that I know. Hola? Okay, no, not that one. Uh, well, that's all. <coughs> about all. <laughs> that's about all I know. All right, well, let's pack it up. This is the way uh, back. <laughs> what an experience. As we were about to leave, this little girl comes up out of nowhere, scares us, and at first we're like, wait. Who's oh my god, I, my first thought is not that they're a lost kid. My first thought is that that is a skinwalker, right? My superstition is taking over on that one. Parents are hers, and she, there, she was just there alone by herself. Then she just stood there in the back, so I started talking to her, but she wouldn't answer me. And I was like, wait a minute. I don't think she speaks English. It turns out she really didn't speak English at all. She's by herself, crawled the whole way in there by herself, no light. Yo, you know what I'm going to say, though? Shitty parents. <clears throat> Shitty parents. If I'm exploring a cave with my fucking five-year-old kid, six-year-old kid, however old that kid was, I'm not letting them wander with, without a flashlight in the middle of a cave where they could literally get lost and die. No light. What the heck? I don't get it. No light. She didn't even speak English. Yeah, like, how do you lose your kid? Inside one of the deepest sectors of the ape cave was a little girl, noticeably terrified and cautious. The group tried to console her. However, Why do I find this BS? No, I think this is real. Dude, she looks like she, she's been in there a while, dude. Like, was that with her parents out there? She was clearly fearing for her life, as she didn't want to approach the strangers in the isolated cave. Turns out that this girl was missing, ran into the ape cave, and crawled to the end of one of its deepest tunnels. Well, the girl dog? was stranded, alone in the dark, and looking at this angle of the only entrance to her location, I wonder if she would ever have been found. Bro, if not imagine being, like, six years old in a fucking pitch black cave if they didn't go there she might have died if they were like oh this is too tight let's turn around she might have died she was let out she's and thank fucking lucky these jackass youtubers wanted to fucking see the rest of the cave hopefully reunited with their family yo I'd, I'd fucking google translate that they have shitty parents yo I'd, I'd return the kid and i'd google translate watch your fucking kid next time jerk off Next bed, lock in.